Good morning and welcome to First United Methodist Church of Costa Mesa's online worship service. I'm Pastor Sarah and it is my joy to welcome you here to our online worship space. First of all, I want to just give a brief uh, personal thank you to all of you who over the last couple of weeks have been uh, reaching out to me as I have been recovering from COVID. I will tell you even wearing masks and making sure to wash my hands and all those kind of things, I still somehow caught COVID. So we have to remain um, diligent. This has not been that much fun and I've had really mild symptoms compared to many. So let's continue to take care of each other and I hope that you are being safe um, yourself. Along those lines, today you're gonna hear a sermon uh, from my dear friend, Reverend Kathy Cap. Um, we worked on our sermon series together and when it became clear this week that I wouldn't be up to recording, she was wonderful and stepped in and has provided her sermon for us. But I wanted to give the announcements and I wanted you guys to see me so that you can see that I was up and starting to recover. Well, happy Advent one, friends. We are um, starting Advent today. Um, I hope that you've got a chance to already pick up your Advent um, kit. It includes the ability to make this craft or however you wanna make it. Um, you can make your own Advent wreath and I hope that you'll follow along with that. Even if you need to start next week, make sure that you grab one of those. We've made enough for the congregation, so I'm hopeful that you will pick those up. We are doing Honest Advent, which is um, based on the work of Scott Erickson, and there's a daily reading that goes along with it, and there's an online Advent calendar that you can follow along with those, or you can follow along in your book. All of this information is going to be below for you to follow along. Now, if you are a parent of a little one, or if you're a little one who, are, who is watching this right now, I wanna let you know that we are gonna be putting a new part of the service that is just specifically designed for our kids, and that's just a moment for them to share a photo with us, it can be a photo of anything they want, um, whether it would be um, one of their favorite items or just something that they think would be a great photo. Um, today, we start with Elia, who sent in a great challenge for a children's sermon. We wanna incorporate and include our little ones, so please send those along. Thank you also to all of you who have given during this time as we continue to try to become a self-sustaining community. Your help um, really helps us get to that goal. Now, my brain is a little bit off, so I might have missed something. So the way to stay updated and in touch with everything is to follow us on social media through First United Costa Mesa, um, which is First United CM. I hope that you are having a fantastic start to Advent 1 as we really do begin today with hope. Listen, deep in the darkest night is the sound of hope. Deep in the midst of despair is a message of new life. Listen, it is coming closer. A bell in the distance, a sound of joy, an echo of love, a note of promise. Help us prepare our hearts for the season of waiting and listening. Amen. All right, friends, today is our first children's sermon, and I am so grateful to Elia for sending in such an incredible challenge. She sent in a photo of her frozen karaoke. So that's going to be our challenge for how does that tell us about God? Well, as I thought about your incredible karaoke machine, Elia, I thought about how many times karaoke is something that teaches us songs that we may not know. That's the thing about God and about being part of a church community is that we learn things by being with others and hearing them sing a song. What are the songs that we always sing in church? Well, they're the songs that remind us of the truth that God loves us. So just like your frozen karaoke machine helps you learn the songs that will help you learn things like how to let it go, hopefully the church songs are helping you learn things like how deeply God loves you. So Elia, thank you so much for sending in that photo of an incredible image, your favorite image. And thank you so much for being our very first children's sermon. All right, kids, if you have something you wanna know a little bit more about, or if you wanna just join in, please go ahead and send us a photo and we'll make sure to use it during the weekly worship service. Thank you. 
I'm Christine and I'm Brian and we will be leading this week's Advent liturgy. Please join us. If there was ever a year we needed Advent, this is the year. We hardly know how to describe the year we have, have we have lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us in 2020. Nothing seems right and yet even in this mess we have the audacity to have hope. An honest hope that requires us to begin with vulnerability and awareness that to hope for anything is to risk disappointment. As people of faith, we are grateful for the example of Mary, who taught us that real courage dares to hope in the as of yet unimagined. In scripture, Isaiah says that there is one who is to come who will be the fulfillment of all our hope. Okay. Okay. Read with me. The spirit of the Lord will rest on this one, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge Hi. and the fear of the Lord. We place our hope in this one who is always surprising. Isaiah chapter 64, verses 3 through 4. Uh, when you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for God. We light this first candle as a sign of our hope. Hope that you can meet us, even in the mess of our world. Hope that you will st still see us, though we feel we are lost in the rubble. Let this be the light, be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel once more. Can you hold it? We just do one, you know? One for today. Please join us in the prayer. God be with us as we enter into this liturgical season of waiting. We have been waiting for what seems like a long time, waiting for change, hoping for a cure, wishing things were different. Today, give us a sense of hope for a future as of yet unimagined. Amen. 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 Good morning. I'm Evie Johnson, and I'll be reading the scriptures this first Sunday of Advent. Also, this date, Sunday, November 29th, is very nostalgic for me. On Sunday, November 29th at 2 o'clock, Gary and I were married in this very church. Uh, family and friends and the entire congregation were in attendance. The ladies of the church decorated Thompson Hall and made Methodist wedding punch. And Laura Jones made my cake. And our own David Reed's mom decorated it very professionally. So I just wanted to share that with you. The scripture today is Luke 1, 26 through 38. And it's the birth of Jesus foretold. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favorite one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of a greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God, and together we say, Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. It is Advent, a season of anticipation and waiting. We experience Advent every year in the journey of Christian life, and yet this year is unlike any other. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting for something or anything or everything to change, to return back to what was once normal. This has been a disorienting year filled with disruptions some holy and some not so holy. We entered into this pandemic during the season of Lent and here we are so much later and we are still in it now. We cannot look at Advent or anything for that matter through the same old lens we have in the past. Now this can be scary, yet it is also a beautiful opportunity to shift ourselves out of old patterns and old lenses and into something new. Now our Honest Advent series is based on a book written by author and artist Scott Erickson, who hopes we might awaken to the wonder of God with us then, here, and now. If you want to journey through this book that has 25 meditations and 25 images for reflection, it is available on Amazon or wherever you get your books. I invite you to do so as we journey through this season this year. Now, using his gifts of artistry, Scott offers a visual vocabulary that seeks to help slow us down and look at Advent and Christmas through an entirely new lens, one filled with awe and wonder. 
one that helps quiet the overly commercialized red and green noise in our cultural holiday season that doesn't really offer us a way to rest in the waiting of Advent, or even helps us focus on the seasons of Advent and Christmas when the traditional ways that we've celebrated seem to be meaningless in this complicated time or have been taken away from us in this pandemic season. So while we are in uncertain territory, let us take this opportunity to create a new narrative, to embrace an honest Advent this year, one that prepares us for the coming hope into the world, because we all need hope now more than ever. Now, our honest Advent journey invites us to experience the tenderness of the moment. It's a journey that will take us through vulnerability, love, identity, and embodiment, and then participation as we share in the celebration of Christ with us at his birth and the God with us that is still present in the now. Let us tend to the awe and wonder of God with us. Now we start this journey today in vulnerability. Perhaps we've heard a lot about the vulnerable over these last eight months, a word used to describe those who are at increased risk of serious illness or death when catching the virus or experiencing COVID-19. Yet being vulnerable to the virus due to age or medical conditions has nothing to do with what we are talking about when we talk about embracing vulnerability. You see, vulnerability is not a label others can place upon you. Vulnerability is something we have to choose for ourselves. And vulnerability is hard. I recently took a poll using social media to find out what people thought or felt when thinking about vulnerability. There were some common themes that wove through the nearly 40 answers I received. Now first, it was very clear, vulnerability makes people uncomfortable. It is scary, gross, makes us feel angry or feel fragile or lack self-confidence. It evokes fear and a sense of failure and it is risky. Yet many people identify that being vulnerable is a risk worth taking, even being essential to our wholeness. It's a, a partner to authenticity and imperative in leadership. It was even described as a curse that loses its power when we embrace it. How powerful is that? But why would we embrace something that is so scary? Now, vulnerability was also described as strength courage, and power. Author Brene Brown poured years worth of research into a book called The Power of Vulnerability. So either these people had familiarity with her work or perhaps they're just brilliant. Maybe a combination of the two. Now trust was a crucial component when it comes to being vulnerable. But no matter how we break it down, there is no way to have vulnerability be something we can plan for and execute without risk of being harmed. There is no way to be vulnerable and to be sure that we will be safe. Vulnerability is essentially not knowing what is going to happen and risking the unknown anyway. Opening ourselves up to encountering whatever lies ahead. Vulnerability 
requires courage. Now, sometimes courage and bravery are seen through the same lens. Yet, in Brene Brown's TED Talk on the power of vulnerability, she points out that courage comes from the Latin word cur, which means heart. And that when courage first entered into the English language, it meant to tell the story of who you are with your whole heart. Mm. Courage, to tell the story of who you are with your whole heart and to risk having that heart ache. That sounds like risk-taking vulnerability to me. Now, vulnerability is hard, but it is also with great reward. It is where the most transformative work of our hearts and minds takes place. It is where we courageously give up control and embrace an open posture of being open to what we don't yet know. It is the foundation for meaningful learning and the doorway through which we must pass when entering into authentic relationship and love with another person. As we enter into Advent, this season of waiting for the God with us then, here, and now, waiting for God with us to speak to us anew, let us embrace a vulnerability no matter how frightening it might make us feel. When we lack vulnerability, we don't need connection with anyone else. And we certainly won't humble ourselves to connect with Jesus, with God incarnate, Emmanuel. We stand in need of grace, and that, my friends, is vulnerability. Now, Scott reminds us that our starting point for connection with Jesus is in our vulnerabilities in our weaknesses, the places where we aren't good enough and when we are not doing it right. Our scripture passage today offers a glimpse into the vulnerability and courage of a young girl named Mary, a great place to begin our journey toward vulnerability this Advent season. So consider Mary. She's a young, teenage, Middle Eastern girl living in a small town in the first century. She comes from a modest home. Her daughters have very little power in their social structure. But she was engaged to a carpenter named Joseph, which means that once she is married, she will be secure in their culture, in her role as a wife, and a bearer of her husband's children, she knows how it works. She knows what her role is. Now, maybe she has met Joseph and feels confident they will get along, or maybe she hasn't. This young girl, Mary, does her best to be honorable to her family's name and to her future husband. Now, even if her family was devout in their Jewish practices. It is not common for women to encounter an angel of the Lord. Yet, while going about her daily routine, Mary has an encounter with the angel Gabriel that transforms her entire being and transforms the world. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, Scripture tells us that Mary is perplexed and does not know what is going on. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. I don't know about you, but if someone tells me not to be afraid, I immediately am aware that there is something worth being afraid of about to happen. 
She's told twice that she is favored. What does that mean? What does Mary understand being favored to mean? The angel continues, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. What? Imagine what is going on inside Mary's head as she hears the angel speaking these words. This is an incredible disruption to her day and, quite frankly, to her life. Mary asks, how can this happen? Though I'm sure she was not expecting the answer she received. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. What? That, my friends, does not seem to be an answer offering any comfort or explanation or understanding to this life-altering news. It's not particularly helpful for this young girl. The angel closes by saying, for nothing will be impossible with God. Okay. Nothing will be impossible with God. That's verse 37. In the very next verse, Mary says, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Friends, I have been a young and vulnerable pregnant teenage girl, and I can tell you, that I really want to know what the story is between verses 37 and 38. What was Mary's real response? How did she feel before she courageously said those words? Yet that is not the point of the story the author wants to convey. We are to pay attention instead to the part of the narrative that tells us that Mary was open to the unknown, even an unknown that comes with incredible risk. Risk to her reputation, to her family's reputation, to her connection with her fiancé Joseph, and her future altogether without even a single answer to the myriad of questions running through her mind, Mary embraced vulnerability in that moment. She was open to the potential God had in store for her, even when it could have cost her everything. Mary's vulnerability to a to risk a future that is totally unknown, to take courage to truly live into the story of who God is calling her to be with her whole heart, her willingness to step out in a radical leap of faith into the unknown prepared her for the incredible gift of divine connection, of bearing the Lord Jesus in her womb. In her vulnerability and courage, Mary became Theotokos, the mother of God. Her radical vulnerability allowed her to be tenderly connected to the God incarnate, the God in person, the God with us in her very core, in her very body. What is it that allowed Mary to say yes to God's invitation so vulnerably? What does it take for us to embrace vulnerability? When everything feels scary and unknown, and we're familiar with that right now, 
hope is an incredibly important, even crucial part. The hope that something bigger than ourselves is at work. Though Mary had very little information about how this event would impact her future or how it would happen specifically, her hope rested in the trust that all things are possible with God and that something much greater than herself was at stake. The image on your screen by Scott Erickson is called unease. When approached by the angel, Mary was almost certainly feeling uneasy. Vulnerability causes unease. Yet, amidst her unease, she was aware of God's presence with her and provision for her which gave her hope. Imagine the golden halo around her head reminding us of God's never-ending presence with us, surrounding us even when facing times of hardship and vulnerability. What is our hope at this time? Where do we find hope? Does hope breed courage or does courage breed hope? Even in the midst of the unknown, we are able to embrace vulnerability with courage because we are not alone. We are a people of hope. God created us in God's own image and God created us each with a purpose in God's kingdom. So let us risk being uncomfortable with a sense of unease so that we can be close to Jesus throughout the difficult days and weeks and months to come. In her vulnerability and courage, Mary said yes to God's invitation that intimately connected her to the Christ child. Saying yes to God might be scary at times. Yet God's presence and provision have the opportunity to grow in us when we say yes. Courageously telling the story of who we are with our whole hearts requires vulnerability. So let us set aside our desire to be in comfort and rely on our own strength for a while so that we can embrace the vulnerability and courage Mary shows us, that we too can recognize the the divine spirit's presence in our deepest self, in our core, in our very body. Let us remember that humbly walking with God with the God with us then, here and now, opens us up to wonder. So let us live with eyes filled with awe and wonder this Advent and Christmas season, the childlike spirit that draws us close and tenderly towards God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. Will you join me now in singing the Advent song based on Hope by the Brilliance? Hope, we will find our hope. We will find our hope. We will find our hope.
joy we will find our joy we will find our joy we will find our joy in you joy we will find our joy we will find our joy we will find our All right, friends, let us receive this, the benediction. If you will open your hands as a way of saying you are open and indeed vulnerable and hopeful for what God has next. Now, let us go out no matter what our circumstances or our past has looked like. May we be hopeful for a future with the realization that if we are vulnerable and present to God, we might be surprised about how God shows up. May we be a blessing to others as we ourselves have been blessed. Have a wonderful week, friends. Amen.